Here we go. Okay, well, welcome everyone. Sorry again for the delayed start and the technical difficulties. Um, I am super excited uh, about this webinar because um, campus recreation is uh, just a super fun um, group that we work with and uh, log rolling is really growing amongst college students. And we've had so much fun working with uh, nearly 200 college campuses across the country to help them add logger line to their rec programs. So welcome everyone. Um, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, if you have questions, please throw them in the, um, in the question and answer uh, box, not the chat box, uh, and we'll manage it that way. And then, um, if you have specific questions, uh, feel free to just, I'm gonna hang out at the end of this. Uh, and so we'll um, unmute everyone. And then if you wanna like hang around and ask, ask me some specific questions about your program, I will uh, stick around you know, for 10 minutes or so uh, to answer any questions you might have about your particular university. So here we go. Uh, I think that the first, um, important thing to do when you're starting a log rolling program uh, with your um, uh, with, on your campus is to think about what your goals and priorities are for adding log rolling. Because um, there's a lot of different programming opportunities that you could take advantage of, a lot of audiences that you could have you could attract. There's um, there's so much you can do. So when you're first starting out, it helps to kind of organize your thoughts a little bit by thinking about, okay, why are we adding log rolling? Do you want to, are you trying to attract new users to your pool? Do you pretty much only have lap swimmers and the swim team? So you're trying to, um, you know, get students to come see what you have in your aquatics program. Uh, are you trying to collaborate with other departments and programs on campus? I know a lot of people tend to think of aquatics like a super separate from the rest of some of the other campus rec things going on or other things on campus. So are you trying to integrate aquatics into other um, programs and departments? Uh, are you, is your intramural program um, completely tapped out of, you know, courts and fields and they're, they're looking, you're, the intramural program is looking to expand, but they don't have any more space. Well, maybe they can come use the pool for more intramurals. Um, super fun to bring more IMs and competitive sports into the pool. Are you looking for a unique activity for special events? Are you hoping to amp up your, if you have a youth and family and community program, are you hoping to like add to that and kind of amp that up? Uh, do you need to generate revenue for your program? Is If that's a goal, that's great. Um, and we can help you find ways to do that with log rolling. So today um, I wanted, I will we'll have other webinars going forward, but for the college campuses specifically, I really wanted to just go through a lot of, because there are so many programming um, opportunities for you guys, I, I just wanted to go through a lot of those. Um, so I'm gonna leave, if we have time at the end, um, I can, I'll talk more about some staff training and that kind of stuff. And if you have like questions more specifically about safety and equipment and use in the pool, um, I can answer those as well for you, but I wanted to first make sure that we cover all of these different um, programming ideas. Cause I know a lot of people actually already have log rolling and they, or they have the key logs. They're just trying to figure out how to get started. Um, so a great um, way to introduce log rolling to your campus community is through special events. Um, and that's a log rolling is super fun at events. Um, and, events are where you have a huge audience. And if you um, don't, if you're having, if you're wanting to get new people into your pool, they're not already coming to the pool. The great thing about the log rolling and the key logs is that you can take that to them to events um, by setting up a super easy uh, inflatable pool um, on the quad, uh, somewhere on campus outside. And you can bring log rolling to a big group of people and then show them, hey, this is actually what we have in our aquatics facility. Why don't you guys come back to our aquatics facility each week and give us a try? Um, 
Plus it's just really fun at events. It's like eye catching. Um, it gets a lot of participation. People really like to watch it. Um, so, you know, adding it to welcome week is obviously a great way to do that. Cause it's right at the beginning of the year, you're getting in freshmen who are going to be there for the next several years. Um, homecoming activities is super fun. If you have Greek week, you can have like competitions in the pool, in the, in the inflatable pool. Um, alumni and anniversary weekends are fun because it is, you know, all ages, family friendly. So if you have alumni with their family coming back, uh, that's a really fun way to show them what you have going on in the pool as well. Uh, for just like ongoing recreational log rolling um, in your pool on a weekly, weekly, daily basis. Um, you know, of course, a really simple, just like open log rolling, pick, you know, a couple nights a week, one night a week and say, Hey, we have log rolling Sunday evenings, six to 8 PM in the pool, uh, have, you know, a staff person there managing it, teaching people how to do it. Um, kids or students can come give it a try. It's just a great way to get people um, into the pool, even like using some of those off hours. If you're trying to fill time in the pool, um, you know, bring in those new users. Maybe they're not lap swimmers, but um, they're looking for something to do in the pool that's different than lap swimming. Um, holding log rolling clinics uh, is super fun. You know, like a 90 minute clinic. Hey, come try log rolling, learn the basics, um, you know, bring a friend. And that's a, a fun like weekend activity for students to do. Uh, any sort of like student activity group on campus that's looking for either some sort of team building activity or meet and greet activity, you know, reach out to those groups and let them know, hey, we have log rolling and they can come. And, um, you know, I know when I was in college and I actually, I taught log rolling and uh, there was, um, there were like a couple different groups um, on campus, like the international students group, you know, where they're, you know, at the beginning of the year, they have new students coming in. They're trying to have a fun activity for everyone to do together. And um, I would teach them log rolling. It was just a fun way to, you know, meet people and do an activity all together. Um, partnering with your outdoor adventure club or like an outing club, uh, you know, a lot of times they will have uh, kayak clinics in the pool in the winter um if you have in in like a, a water climbing pool um or sorry if you have a if you have a uh, a water climbing wall uh and and they do climbing in the pool those are fun ways to add log rolling into the out the outing clubs or the outdoor students um in particular are like really drawn to log rolling because of the balance component and the being in the water um with your um, having it just as a fitness activity um, is a great way to, um, you know, offer log rolling as an activity to students. Um, cross training for uh, other athletics teams. Um, in the off season, I know like at Indiana University, um, the women's volleyball team would go and do log rolling as an activity together. Uh, it, log rolling is such great balance and foot speed, agility, core strength, and it's really injury free. You just fall safely into the water. Uh, so it's again, a great off season activity for, for teams. Uh, intramural log rolling. Uh, this is super, super fun to add uh, into your program. So, you know, if you, again, in your aquatics program, um, you probably have like club swimming or club swim team. Um, there's maybe you do, um, uh, what is it? Canoe battleship. Uh, log rolling is a great competitor competitive activity that you can add to the pool. So there's a, a few different ways that you could like add it or like work with your intramural program to add log rolling. Um, one could be like a weekly log rolling league uh, where you are, maybe it's, you know, one day a week, the first 30 minutes are everyone comes to just practice. Uh, and then, you know, after 30 minutes, whoever is there, you drop a quick bracket and uh, you have a little log rolling tournament. Um, 
or you could have like a challenge, you could have like a weekly ongoing ladder where people are have like scheduled matches each week. And then you, you know, move up or down the ladder, depending on how you do in your match, if you're in the, if you're in the league, but you could also just have it be an intramural log rolling tournament, just like one, you know, one or two times throughout the semester where um, it's just a one day thing. It's not like an ongoing weekly intramural activity. Uh, and, you know, maybe you have a couple, I, I know, um, I'm trying to think what university this fall did this um, in Texas, but they, uh, they had three sort of like workshops uh, leading up to the tournament. So they had three days where you could come try log rolling and practice and learn how to do it. And then on the fourth day, um, throughout the semester, they had the, or the final day, they actually had a tournament. So like everyone that had, you know, taken the classes, then that final day, um, they, they drew up a bracket and had like a full tournament. Um, eventually you might have students that get pretty into it and actually want to, uh, develop their own sport club. Uh, I know it's different at each university in terms of how those clubs are funded and approved and developed and stuff, but I can, if, if that is something where students on their own want to start to uh, create their own sport club and get funding to then go to other tournaments and uh, get funding for, you know, reserving the pool for their practice time and stuff. There are a few different models and I can also put those students in touch with other students at other universities that have done that so that they can get ideas from them. Uh, I just wanted to share a few like posters that people have done just so you can kind of see what other universities are doing. Like for example, you see the one, uh, the intramural key log rolling tournament uh, and they, you know, had that as an event um, in a, in one of those inflatable pools outside, uh, you know, just right on campus. Um, one, this water pole and log rolling, you know, pairing it with other activities is a really great way to do it because log rolling is so new and unique. Um, you know, people might not really know what they're signing up for, but if they're into water polo, they're going to go and say, and then they'll say, oh, this log rolling is pretty cool. Um, so pairing it with other activities is a good way uh, to get people in the door. As you can see, the other one is just, you know, like putting posters out, um, you know, this day at this time, we're going to have log rolling uh, and use a great photograph so people know what it's all about. Um, you know, Tuesday nights for an hour in the pool, people are log rolling. So lots of different ways to go about it. Uh, another um, this is a little bit outside of campus recreation, but I think it's something really cool um, that, that you can do and that you should, you know, introduce to um, other departments that are like, let them know that this is something that you could do um, is to use log rolling uh, for within the academic fields or within academic research, especially if your school does have like a strong uh, sports science department or has a strong sports marketing management or um, you know parks recreation management program. Uh, these photographs are from the University of Wisconsin La Crosse, and they have a really strong, uh, you know sports, physical education, rec management uh, program. And so this particular student was just doing a baseline study on, um, you know, heart rate and, um, you know, VO2 max type stuff with log rolling. And it's pretty fun because there aren't for students these days, you know, it's hard to find uh, a topic where you're doing completely original research. And for this student, she was the first person who had ever studied this with log rolling. Uh, and that was really cool. She was published in um, an article in the American Council of Exercise. Um, so it's a great way to show, uh, you know, some of the academics departments that campus recreation, you know, serves more than just like students having fun on campus, that there is, there can be like an academic component to this um, and a research component, um, you know, for the parks, recreation and leisure management students, you know, we're introducing key log rolling. We've introduced log rolling to park and rec programs all over the country. Uh, for So for those students in those programs to understand, um, you know, how to start a log rolling program, um, 
how to train staff, how to, uh, you know, incorporate it into their rec programming. That for them is a really great thing to put on a resume when they're leaving your university that they know how to log roll, they know how to start a log rolling program. Um, I think it's just, you know, a, again, another value add to your students. Um, so that's kind of, and again, if anyone has specific questions about that, I we have lots of different topics and you know what directions to point you in, um, or your students if that's something they're interested in. For um, non-campus, if you if you have like a community program or like a you know uh, if you're if you're doing activities for youth and families within your community that aren't students or staff, uh, log rolling is a really fun uh, thing to introduce to them. Uh, if you have a strong swim lesson program, you can add log rolling on to that swim lesson uh, uh, format. Um, you know, once, once kids age out of swimming, swim lessons, if they're not, um, you know, joining the swim team or you kind of, especially if you don't have a swim team on your campus for the community, if you're just, just doing swimming lessons, log rolling is another way to keep them kind of coming back to your pool for more classes. You know, they're paying, um, they're, they pay for classes. Uh, it's another, if you have, um, you know, if you offer family swim time, log rolling is a, another thing that you could, you know, charge for families to come and try it. If you do a pool party rental program, uh, again, another way to uh, charge for other, you know, I know some campuses don't necessarily want to like charge their students to use the equipment. But if you're doing this for, you know, families and communities that are coming to use the pool, um, I think this is a great way to generate revenue back for your program. Uh, also other, if you in the summertime um, run a lot of sports camps or rent your facilities to sports camps and day camps, having, you know, making sure that they know log rolling is potentially an option that they could do in the pool. Um, Again, for sports teams, log rolling is a great cross training activity, something super unique. Um, summer camp, kids love to be in the water. So this is a great water activity. Uh, and you know, if they're doing basketball for the first part of the day, log rolling could be that kind of like extracurricular, like extra afternoon activity for them. Uh, another thing too, is that if you do run like a summer, um, like summer, a pool program. Uh, you can basically just run log rolling like a community um, community park and rec program. And so I can, you know, I know some in some communities, um, the universities do that. So I can also point you in the direction of um, how to, you know, run more of like a community oriented program if you want some things much more specifically for that. Okay, staff training. Uh, I think that the biggest thing that people think about, or sometimes the biggest hurdle is when they're like, okay, but I don't have any log rolling staff. You know, how am I going to start this program if we don't have anyone to manage it? Well, the great thing about log rolling is that you don't need, uh, expert log rollers. Uh, you already have, uh, the staff that can run this and, um, we have the tools that can help you. Uh, the thing about log rolling is that unlike uh, other sports where you really need to have a lot of experience, I say this a lot, like, you know, if you're going to teach someone how to play tennis, you have to be a very good tennis player yourself to be able to serve them the ball and, um, you know, give them the right uh, instruction for skiing. If you're going to teach someone how to ski, you have to know how to ski down the hill yourself. Um, you know, sports like football and basketball, you need their uh, soccer, you have to have a really in-depth, uh, you know, knowledge of the, there's a lot of rules uh, and, um, you know, things that you have to uh, know, intricacies of the sport. Well, log rolling is, uh, I like to say it's a challenging sport, but it's not complicated. In terms of rules, it's basically two people on one log, you can't touch each other and you can't cross the center line and it's the last person on. So it's a pretty straightforward sport in terms of rules um, and guidelines. Um, in terms of uh, technique, uh, the basics are, you can, you can teach the basics on, uh, you know, on the pool deck, give people the right stance and step, 
And you can demonstrate that on land. Even if you're not like an expert log roller, you can show them kind of the basic technique on land. And then, um, you know, everyone can try it in the pool. Um, so you don't need to have, you can train your staff how to run and manage a really fun log rolling program. Uh, I would recommend uh, uh, a, a kind of fun way to kind of figure out who the good, who, who might be interested in uh, being a log rolling staff person uh, would be introduce it to your lifeguards or your swim instructors at an in-service. Have them, you know, maybe at the end, have them say, hey, we're going to put the logs in. Uh, everyone's just, let's, we're going to have fun, play, everyone's going to play around on it and observe who, who is really drawn to it. Uh, observe who is encouraging of, you know, other, of their uh, fellow staff members uh, who is kind of helping other people like, hey, uh, try this or, you know, do that. Um, they might be good log rolling instructors. So once you kind of observe who likes it and who's drawn to it, then ask, hey, would you like to be part of our log rolling staff? And I definitely re recommend making it, um, you know, like an actual staff thing, because it gives, um, you know, it gives those students ownership of the program, makes them feel responsible for it. Uh, so once you've kind of selected who your staff uh, will be, then, uh, you know, have them review our written manuals, have them review our videos, and then have a time for them just to come practice together. And then what I would do is once they all kind of are familiar, have familiarized themselves with log rolling, bring in another, another staff group. Maybe it's, um, you know, a weight training, maybe it's the fitness staff or uh, it's another department and bring them in. They've never tried log rolling before and have your log rolling staff practice teaching with them. And that gives them uh, the chance to be able to practice saying the cues and teaching people that have never tried log rolling before uh, so that that those people who haven't tried it before, you know, they'll pick up on, oh, wait, this didn't quite make sense. Or could you say this another way? Uh, and that'll really hone your staff's skills. So um, we also do have on-site staff training workshops where we will come to you uh, and train your staff for you. Um, so I think that's a really great way to get, you know, really get started on the right um, foot, no pun intended with log rolling. Uh, but uh, you can, we do have tools, you know, for you to get started on your own as well. So um, both, I think, have been proven to, um, you know, make successful log rolling programs. So moving on to, I put this at the end, <laughs> maybe I should have put it at the beginning, but um, I just wanted to go over this checklist with you uh, because I think that uh, it's happened enough times where I know that with different programs and departments, you know, if you're an aquatics uh, director at university, maybe you're coming in new and they've had key, you weren't maybe the person that started the log rolling program um, or, you know, all of a sudden you came in and it had already been in the works and this program just got uh, plopped down uh, in your lap. So I think uh, this is really basic, but it does help to kind of like outline um, just these steps for you. Uh, one is your equipment check. Uh, the equipment is very easy to use with log rolling, but uh, you know, it's important to make sure that you have kind of everything there, which is your key logs, one, um, and then the training fins, which are the yellow um, accessories that come with it that are, uh, we suggest putting, starting out with three that really slows and stabilizes the log for beginners. Uh, so make sure that you have your training fins um, with the straps to secure them on the key log. Um, make sure that you know how to, and your staff knows how to use the key logs in the water. So you want to put your key logs in the water. And once they're in the water, you fill them up with water and you want to fill them entirely full to make sure that the log spins evenly. Uh, we have videos that show, you know, how to, again, it's very simple, but just put your log in the water. You open up the fill ports. You can either put fill them with a hose or with a funnel. Um, 
you want to make sure it's entirely full because we do see, you know, if you don't, once you do it the first time, it's very easy, but if you've never done it, um, you know, some people just put the log right in the pool and, you know, don't realize they need to fill it. And then it sits really high on top of the water. It's too buoyant to spin on. It makes it very challenging, of course, because it's so light. Uh, and so a, that's just a easy, easy fix, but just something to, um, to remember is to just do a quick equipment check, make sure everyone knows how to use the logs. Um, you know, training your staff in some way or another, making sure that, you know, those on your staff have familiarity with it, know how to get the logs in and out of storage, putting them in the water, and then, of course, um, you know, leading it as a safe activity in the pool. Getting the word out. You know, students aren't necessarily going to be coming to campus looking for log rolling. They might not know that it hopefully soon as we grow, you know, there are going to be students that are coming in and saying, hey, like I did log rolling in high school or I did it in my park and rec. Is it here? Um, but we are a growing sport. So, um, you know, they might not even be students might not know that it's that it's even available. Uh, so getting the word out there, um, you know, whether it's flyers around campus, um, obviously social media, um, invite a, a good way to get some word of mouth out there again is to invite those different student activity groups or to let them know, you know, let um, RAs know that log rolling uh, could be an activity that they bring, um, you know, some of the, uh, the students in their dorms to come do an activity together. Um, you know, different sports teams, different clubs, uh, let them know that log rolling is an activity that they can come and try in the pool. And that helps um, spread the word on campus. Uh, adding log rolling to a special event, again, really high visibility at the beginning of the year. Uh, and then, you know, putting it on the schedule. I think that's the biggest thing is just so that uh, students know when they can come try log rolling, uh, you know, whether you're putting it on the schedule in, you know, a weekly league or you're saying this date, um, at the end of the semester, we're going to have a log rolling tournament. Um, potentially, you, or perhaps you have a, um, I know a lot of uh, campuses will do a, you know, during finals week, have some activities to like de-stress activities or activities to get moving. Um, that's a really good place to put it on the schedule. Uh, so just get a few things kind of, um, set in place so that you so that it motivates you to get prepared for like okay we're gonna have log rolling at this event or this activity um and so we gotta you know get in there and get using it and and start getting rolling so with that that's pretty much you know i would say kind of follow those steps and it's a great way to get a program started um i'm gonna just check in the chat here and see if we have any questions doesn't look like look either did answered everything or <laughs> not at all uh let's see okay well great um i'm gonna just stick around so we'll unmute it if you want to um ask any particular um questions that are you know specific to your university i'm happy to answer those of course you can always email uh email me directly abby at keyloggerling.com we can set up a time uh to chat about your program i will say that we also uh we are developing a virtual training uh program so if that's something you're interested in uh we'd love to you know talk to you about our different training options um so i hope that we can help you get rolling again log rolling is a really great activity to add to your campus rec program uh and i ho i hope that you give it a try Okay. And if you want to ask a question, uh, just I've unmuted everyone. So you might have to unmute yourself in the lower left hand corner 
to ask a question. Okay. And um, Devin, do you want to ask a question? If you do, there you go. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't really have any questions. Um, I, I'm more of the situation where I was hired and they had this log roll, but I have no idea what to do with it. So I, I've been taking notes and it, I have more ideas of how I can actually use this now at the pool that I'm at. What pool are you at, Devin? I'm at Maritime College. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, and are you, um, what kind of pool do you have? Um, it's a six lane pool, um, 25 yards. There's a three meter board and the 10 meter diving board. Um, they have a college swim team I have a small club team um it's an older building so it has like the really high walls so my only concern would have been is it safe if they fall off like since the walls are so high but I think the log is short enough that it could easily be in the middle of the pool so yeah, here, actually, I'm going to just switch to another slide here um, and just show you kind of how, if you kind of see this diagram, um, we do have, uh, we, there are ways to anchor the log also. Um, so we, I don't know if you guys have them. Um, I can send you a link, but we have anchoring straps that you can clip to either end of the log. And then, and those are all on swivel hooks. So then you could anchor the log either to, um, you know, you could clip it to like a lane line actually. Cause I know some of the older pools don't necessarily have a lot of like anchor points in the bottom of the pool. But if you had yeah. like a lane line, skipped a line and then to, had another lane line, you could anchor them to the lane lines. We also have um, like some anchor weight bags that you could purchase that you just fill with weight and then you drop those into the bottom of the pool. They will um, help keep the log from moving a lot in the pool. I will say it's not gonna like anchor it, you know, 100% in place, um, but it'll help so that the log in general stays, you know, in one area in the pool. Um, but yeah, as long as you're just a safe distance away from the edge and we recommend like 10 feet in front and 10 feet behind, mm -hmm. um, then, you know, you're just going to fall safely into the pool. Log rolling is actually great for a, like a great activity for some of those, you know, for, I, I actually find that some of the best programs are the ones where they don't have, you know, if you don't have like the whole big leisure pool with the lazy river and that kind yeah, of stuff, if you can't add, you know, this is actually one really easy new activity to add. That's, that's something that's really unique that you can bring to the pool. Um, and especially if you, especially for those that want to develop sort of like a more competitive log or like club log rolling, um, you know, where students are really coming in and, you know, they're getting, they're getting good practice and, um, uh, it's, it's pretty fun to have like a, you know, a log rolling tournament or something like that in, in the pool. Um, and all you need is like that box of water, that old swimming pool and that works great. Yeah. I think the, uh, kids there would really like it because there was like a group, they made their own, uh, water polo practice time because they couldn't do their regular practices out on the field. So, it's a relatively competitive school. So I think that they would like this and they have um, preseason. So this would be something good for those few weeks before, you know, everyone comes back to campus. It's just the team with their team. So, and 
this will cool them off because it's hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I was gonna say, I have a feeling you have a sort of competitive um, campus. That's why I was thinking that. I think that like that would be something that would, um, could be successful. Um, you know, you don't need to have, we, we we're gonna have another webinar um, about how to put on a log rolling tournament. Um, but, and just like with more, you know, go a little bit more into detail into competitive log rolling. Um, but uh, you don't need to be like, even brand new beginners in log rolling love to compete. So like, as soon as you try it and you kind of get the hang of it and you're like, okay, figure it out. Your student, especially students are like, okay, I want, you know, like I want to challenge someone else. And like I said, they don't need to be, have like a lot, they can compete even as beginners. Like m everyone, mo all the universities that are adding log rolling right now, like all the students that are getting into it, they're all getting into it at like a pretty beginner level, um, but getting pretty excited about it because they can get, they can get good fast and they can, and they can be competitive with it. So especially for students that maybe they were like on varsity teams in high school and stuff, but they're not necessarily competing, um, you know, on a varsity team in college, this can be a sport where they can really like get out that, you know, that competitive outlet and take on something new um, that they have never done before. Um, so if you yeah, ever want to talk more about like adding it more formally into like intramurals or anything like that, I'm happy to chat. Yeah, no, that would be really great. Um, I do have one question about the setup, just on a guesstimate, how long does it take to set up? How long does it take to set it up? Yeah, like fill the log and, you know, get it in and out of the pool, assuming that everyone kind of is more familiar with it. Yeah, just a couple. I mean, so basically like if you're, you know, if you're storing the logs, on the edge of the, like, you know, against a wall, you, you can really store them wherever, like, you know, in a storage room, if you have them on a little dolly, I mean, they, when they're empty, when they're drained, they're, they weigh 65 pounds. So, um, once you put it in the water to fill it up with water, depending on whether you have like a hose on the pool deck, or, um, you could get like a gallon size funnel and just like funnel the water in, it takes like three to four minutes to fill the log up. Um, you know, a minute once you know how to do it to put the training fins on you just slot you just slide those on and strap them down um i mean you know the log rolling club here in minneapolis that i'm a part of we rent actually pool space at the university um so when and we log roll kind of like in the old the older pool there and you know we I think like have five logs at a time in the pool and one hose and, you know, we get everything, get them all, you know, filled up and training fins on and everything in like 15 minutes. And so filling, just getting like one log set up is pretty easy. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Cause that means I'm, I'm conveniently having an in-service meeting with my lifeguards um, in like two weeks. So I can introduce them to the log rolling at the same time. Yeah. Um, but that's good to know because I have just open swim times and people, they'll come and hang out. So if it's something that can be set up pretty quickly, um, I can just add that as like an available option just for open swim in general. That, no, that that's exactly it. And that's what I hear a lot of times from other um, programs um, is that like, you know, with the, some of those big inflatables and that kind of stuff, they're like, oh, I'm like my staff, they don't want to set it up and it takes mm -hmm. a long time. They have to inflate them and anchor them and everything. But with log rolling, literally they can just go in, grab the logs, put them in the, in the pool. So it can, you know, if, if you're, if you want to like kind of give that um, decision-making or that ownership to your staff and say, Hey, if you guys feel that like during open swim time, if there are people there that would want to use the logs and you guys feel like you can get them in and try it and start rolling on them. Um, like that's great. Cause they get, they get used more. It's not like it's this huge setup where like, okay, we have to close the pool for the day to like yeah. set up. 
you know, this whole thing. Um, yeah, I was yeah, they could I would have more to... on a weekly, daily basis. Yeah, I was worried that it would be something where I would have to like call maintenance to come and set it up and it has to be set up for X amount of time. And No, 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 no. Yeah, it's super. And then when you drain and then to take them out, do you just there's like fill ports on either end? You just open up, you know, where where you filled the log, then you just open those up, let the water drain out. It just takes a couple minutes to drain it out and then you can just take it right out of the pool. OK, cool. That's really good to know. Thank you. Yeah anything else um not at the moment but where could i get your contact information in case i have more questions sure yeah well like anything on your our website comes to me but my email address um is just abby abby at keyloggrolling.com and i'll be sending a follow-up email to the webinar um with you know just some more details and information about like any upcoming webinars and that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well have, I hope you have fun, um, with your staff, um, at the in-service. And if you have any questions ahead of that, um, let me know, but I think that would be a great way to introduce it, uh, to your staff and get them comfortable with it. Um, if you need, if you go onto our YouTube page, we have like videos on our YouTube page. And if you, I don't know, you would have received with the, your key logs, like an instructional uh, packet, but I know sometimes when hands change, that doesn't always get transferred. So we have that, you know, like I could send you the P, like PDFs of our manuals and that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Know. I'll take a look. Cause I've seen the um, little what did you call them? The things that slow them down? The training. Fence. Yeah, the training. I've seen those. I didn't notice straps, but they have other storage closets. So I'm going to ask around and then I'll get back to you on if I need those. Okay. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure that you have the straps for the training fins before you start because that will secure them on the log. Um, I mean, you could always like, if you didn't <laughs> have them you could just like jerry rig something at the last minute with a zip tie or something but we do sell replacement straps so if you've lost the straps you can just purchase those on our website okay. um but yeah make sure you definitely when you're first starting it's i really recommend like making sure that you start with a training fence just because it creates a progression of learning people have a lot more success at you know if you if you don't use the training fins it's it just makes it too challenging to learn and so you yeah. feel like you can't figure it out but pretty quickly, you know, especially with young athletic students, like they use the training fins, they get the hang of it, and then they start to remove them one by one for more challenge. But then, you know, when you have new beginners, again, you just slide them right back on. So they're really easy to take on and off. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, have a great weekend. And yeah, I hope we can help you guys get going more this year. Yeah, I'll definitely be in touch. Okay, thanks, Devin. Okay, it's a wrap.